graphics cards are the bread and butter of PC gaming, and without them we wouldn't have any games. But it's always quite tricky to buy the right one, and now Nvidia are making your life even harder by giving you yet another option with the GTX 1070 Ti. Obviously this sits between the 1070 and the 1080, and it's a direct rival to the Vega 56, which is of course very recently released from AMD. The 1070 Ti that I've got here is the Founders Edition, and I have to say, forgetting about acoustics and thermals for a second, I still think it is the best looking graphics card on the market. I love just the way it looks and how minimalist it is, and yes you can get graphics cards out there with more fans, RGB lighting, but if I was going to pick a card just on aesthetics, then the Founders Edition still would be the top of my list. The Founders Edition itself hasn't really changed though since the 1080 and 1070, so we've got the usual array of three display ports on the side of the card with an HDMI 2.0, a backplate on the back, and then that blower style design that will give you great thermals if you're in a very restrictive case as it will chuck all of the air out of the back. But in your usual PC case where you've got a lot of airflow, a third party card will probably still make a lot more sense as it will give you lower temperatures and in theory, higher boost clocks. Moving on to performance though, and this is where things do change slightly from usual. Normally the system is you buy the Founders Edition, which is like the reference design and the reference clock speeds, or you can buy a pre-overclocks card from someone like ASUS that will get you slightly higher performance out of the box. But that's not really the case anymore, and I'm not sure why it is, but it seems that all of the third parties, the overclocks if you like, aren't really existent, and the clocks will be the same on the Founders Edition versus the third parties. But then things get really tricky because depending on the thermal design, the boost clock will increase depending on the thermals. So the Founders Edition that runs at around about 82, 83 degrees, the boost clocks will probably be lower than if you'd spent more money and gone for something like the ASUS Edition. But bearing in mind that's so much more expensive, it probably really doesn't actually make sense to do that unless you are going to overclock the card yourself, but more on that later. In terms of outright performance, I have to say I am actually quite impressed with the 1070 Ti. It's still quite far away from a GTX 1080, but it's definitely worth noting that all of the cards I'm testing against here are third party cards, other than the Vega 64, which is the special edition liquid cooled. So to put that into perspective, the MSI Gaming X 1070, while it is still quite similar performance to the 1070 Ti, there is quite a noticeable gap and for a very small amount of extra money, you're getting quite a lot of extra performance, which is great to see. In 1440p, this is definitely the cards you should pick up. 4K is slightly more tricky though, and if you do really want to play 60 frames a second max settings at uh, full resolution and full refresh rate, then you're probably gonna struggle a little bit. But if you grab yourself a G-Sync monitor and you maybe turn a couple of the settings down, then at 4K, this card is going to be ideal. Comparing against the Vega 56 is actually pretty tricky for me as I don't have that card yet. It should be coming in very soon, but AMD couldn't get it to me in time, unfortunately. So in the meantime, you can check out some lovely benchmarks from the guys over at Hexus. I will leave the full link to their excellent review in the description below. But as you can see from Shadow of War, it's actually more or less neck and neck but it will of course depend on a per title basis and whether you favor Team Red or Team Green really. The other thing to mention is overclocking and this card is not gonna be the best out there for it. You're going to want to pick up a third party if you want the absolute best uh, thermal headroom and things like that. But you can definitely get extra performance out of it. It's not gonna be completely game changing, but if you're just off that 60 FPS minimum, then this will definitely help you out. Um, but of course it will depend on the exact title and how far you want to push the overclock. And so having said all of this, ultimately is the card worth buying? Well, I'll be honest with you, when Nvidia first sent out this review sample, I was very skeptical and I wasn't sure that there was a gap, if you like, for this graphics card. And in all honesty still, I'm not convinced that there is. But extra choice is definitely a good thing, and it is a better card than the 1070 in both performance and performance per dollar or performance per pound, which means it makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. 
but if you're running a fairly new card, there's not really that much to get excited about here. It's by no means a game changer. But it is definitely great to see that there's strong competition between Nvidia and AMD. And if you're a 1440p gamer or a 4K G-Sync panel gamer, then this is definitely a card that's worth considering and it does win the top purchase award. Let me know what you thought of this review down in the comments section below and what you think of the 1070 Ti. And I'll open up another question for you. What do you think about Founders Edition cards? Do you think they're worth investing in? Do you agree with me that they're as good looking as they are? Or would you always go for a third party? Really interested to hear your thoughts on this one as always. Subscribe for more videos just like this and obviously like the video if you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.